This video is about amoeboic dysentery and bacillary dysentery. So here we have two terms that is diarrhea and dysentery. Diarrhea is the condition that involves frequent passes of loose or watery stool at least three times a day and no other symptoms. But in case of dysentery, it is an intestinal inflammation that is gastroenteritis, primarily of the colon with stomach cramp and severe diarrhea along with blood and mucus present in the stool which leads to the complication of dehydration. And the general causative agent of dysentery are Entomoeba histolytica that causes amoeboic dysentery and Cisella species that causes bacillary dysentery, which is also known as sigillosis. Moving towards amoeboic dysentery, the causative agent is Entomoeba histolytica and which is spread by the fecal oral route there are three different types of cysts of entomoeba histolytica that is uninucleated cyst having single nucleus binucleated having two nucleus and quadrinucleated cyst having four nucleus so here once the patient ingests the cyst or trophozoite of the parasite through the contaminated food or water it passes towards the alimentary canal but these cysts are not affected by the acidity of stomach hence they finally passes towards the small intestine where excitation occurs excitation is the process of release of trophozoite from the cyst form usually in the ileum portion this process happens and these trophozoite migrate towards the large intestine which is the primary site for the multiplication and finally leading towards the condition with non-invasive dysentery intestinal disease and extra intestinal disease so the clinical condition can be non-invasive but simply dysentery and intestinal disease such as ulcers can happen and uh, extra intestinal disease related with liver abscess brain lungs can cause the pathological manifestation so now moving towards the basilary dysentery the causative agents are gram negative rods of genus cisella they are also spread through the fecal oral route and the disease condition is also known as sigillosis. The pathogenesis involved are ingestion of bacteria through fecal oral contamination and these bacteria are also non affected by the stomach acidity. So they finally move towards the small intestine but this is not their primary site hence they migrate towards the large intestine. In the large intestine, the multiplication of bacteria happens. They release the various virulence factor, including the Ciga toxin, which is one of the most effective toxin of Cisella. That finally destroys the intestinal cells and also lead towards the dysentery. So finally, heading towards the final heading, that is difference between amoeboic dysentery and bacillary dysentery. So there are several macroscopic as well as microscopic finding and the first one is the obvious one that is amoeboic dysentery is caused by a parasite that is Entomoeba histolytica and the basilary dysentery is caused by bacteria that is Cisella species. There are usually 6 to 8 motions in amoeboic dysentery and in basilary there are over 10 and the volume is relatively abundant in amoeboic dysentery compared to the bacillary dysentery. The stool is usually semi-formed in amoeboic and in bacillary it is usually watery and the blood and mucus are mixed along with the stool in amoeboic whereas in bacillary blood and mucus are not mixed. The order is usually fishy or offensive order in amoeboic in bacillary it is usually orderless. So the color of the stool in amoeboic dysentery is dark red. This is due to the blood and mucus mixed along with the stool that makes the color dark. And in case of basilary, it is bright red because is the blood and mucus are separated. It is bright. So finally, the stool of amoeboic dysentery do not adhere to the container. And in basilary, it attach or it gets stuck in the container. So these are the macroscopic finding now moving towards the microscopic finding which is very important for the diagnosis of dysentery. The most important uh, clinical specimen for the diagnosis of dysentery is obviously stool. So in microscopic slide uh, is in both cases of dysentery there is presence of 
blood hence the rbcs are clumped in amoeboic whereas in bacillary they are discrete and sometimes with rolex formation the pocels are few in amoeboic dysentery whereas in bacillary they are numerous macrophages are few in amoeboic whereas in bacillary they are numerous and often mistaken for entomoeba histolytica the level of eosinophil rises in case of parasitic infections so obviously in amoeboic dysentery there is presence of uh, or rise level of eosinophil in blood whereas in bacillary dysentery there may be few or absence of eosinophil the pinotic bodies these are the condensed fragments of nucleus after the cellular necrosis or apoptosis is in cases of amoeboic dysentery there is huge intestinal cell damage so there is the presence of pinotic bodies in stool whereas in bacillary dysentery that is comparatively very low amount of cellular destruction hence there is absence of pinotic bodies the next is charcot laden crystal that are the hexagonal bipyramidal structure formed by the breakdown of eosinophil so obviously in amoeboic dysentery there is presence of eosinophils hence there is chances of um, charcot laden crystal to be in amoeboic dysentery and absent in bacillary dysentery so the last one that is ghost cells these are the swollen or enlarged epithelial cells with only cytoplasmic outline but no nucleus and they are present in bacillary dysentery whereas absent in amoeboic dysentery so the last uh, difference can be culture on macanchiagar plate in case of amoeboic dysentery, you can find the mixed growth of intestinal normal flora, whereas in case of bacillary dysentery, the pure Cicilla species can be obtained. The last difference can be uh, presence of mixed motile organism in the microscopic slide of stool in case of amoeboic dysentery, whereas in bacillary dysentery, we can see the non-motile organism overcoming the motile organism because Cicilla is non-motile. So this was all about the amoeboic dysentery, basilary dysentery and their differences. I hope you liked the video.